embedded systems interview needs a focused and a different kind of approach. It's neither core electronics nor core computer science. It's a perfect blend of both and that's what we need to understand while we're preparing for an embedded systems interview. Hello everyone, my name is Puneet Bansil. I did my master's specializing in embedded systems and I've been in the industry for around two years now. I have been through this process numerous amount of times um, and I know how daunting this process can be. I receive a lot of questions from juniors on LinkedIn as to, you know, I've got this dream interview call that I want to crack, but I don't know what to prepare, how to prepare. And specifically, there is a lot of information uh, available in the market uh, and so much so that it gets overwhelming. Um, and the same things happened for me as well. Uh, so this is my attempt uh, to give it back to the community with all the things that worked out well for me, with the things I felt are very important to crack these embedded systems coding interviews um, and whatever worked for the people I've helped through LinkedIn. So let's get started. Firstly, let's get started with the process. So an embedded systems interview typically will consist of one to two phone screens followed by a technical um, virtual on-site interview. Uh, each of these interviews will essentially test your embedded systems concepts followed by you know coding problems. And yes, you will be required to provide compilable code and perform hands-on coding. <laughs> Thanks to COVID, gone are the days of whiteboarding to solve a coding problem. You will have to, you know, get your hands dirty um, and get those coding problems uh, solved at that specific time. And, and, you know, needless to say, all of these things only after you know each and everything mentioned in your resume. So I've already talked about how an embedded systems interview will be basically divided into concepts and coding. So firstly, uh, I'm going to talk about the concepts. Now, uh, I wanted to give this disclaimer that this by no means is going to be an exhaustive list of concepts, you know, which is definitely going to be asked in every interview. But I can say this with utmost confidence that this is something that you should at least know before you are going to, you know, go for that uh, dream job interview of yours. And at least it will provide you a direction as to what all things you need to research on, what not, what all things you need to work on and what all, you know, it will open up your mind. I'm, I'm, I'm very sure about it. Okay, so uh, as an embedded software engineer, a firmware engineer, applications engineer, call it whatever, you're supposed to know basics of embedded systems, operating systems, as well as C programming concepts and best practices to write the most efficient C code. All right, so firstly, getting into the C programming uh, concepts and best practices. You should be aware about static, volatile, what's a const, uh, you know, um, memory layout of a C program. What happens when you compile a C code pointer manipulation? Uh, you know, what happens uh, with post increment, uh, stuff like that. So a pro tip here is Geeks for Geeks. All these concepts are available on Geeks for Geeks. Go and give it, uh, you know, a five to 10 minute read for every topic, make your notes, get done with it. Second thing, let's talk about embedded concepts. Now these are, this is something which I'm really passionate about. You should be knowing what happens when you turn on a microcontroller, what happens, you know, what an interrupt occurs, you know, what's the process uh, of, you know, when an interrupt is going to happen. You shouldn't have a knowledge of architecture, ARM architecture and uh, stuff like that. What happens when you call a function? What's a calling convention? right so this is some of the things which should intrigue you and these are some of the very commonly asked questions there then coming to operating system concepts now there's free rtos there is linux what is the difference between the two when do you use it you know uh, stuff like that what are system calls virtual memory what is virtual memory you know uh, we should have a very good understanding of the concept similarly for caches uh, you know what are the different sorts of caches cache coherence stuff like that everything should be um, uh, on your you should have great knowledge about it and knowledges of semaphores new texts and when and how to use them great resource that worked for me youtube go out like for me the things that worked out is that any concept i wanted to know i just watched videos for that I found out that 
watching 10 minutes of video i was able to grasp more information than 30 to 40 minutes of reading about the same topic operating systems there is the np tell uh, iit karakpur or kanpur video i am not too sure but uh, there's a video uh, of np tell on operating systems if you have no idea about anything and you would like to have a very good idea about what operating systems um, does and what are the various concepts around it go for that video it's 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 a great it's a gem uh, talking about embedded concepts everything is available on youtube just uh, uh you know type in these concepts to see whatever good videos are there make notes and then keep them handy for all sorts of interview preparations now let's talk about coding and this is the most fun part but sadly this is the part where most of the aspirants gets confused what should we be preparing should we be doing data structures and algorithms should we be doing hash maps and since there is a no answer directly that they will ever get, a lot of time gets wasted in preparing for things that's not even needed. Um, and then they fail to answer even the basic old school straight out of the box questions. The only purpose of making this video is to make sure that this does not happen, is to make sure that you're able to streamline your interview preparation process, that you know the things that matter. Um, and then if you have time, go ahead and do whatever you want to do, right? Firstly, let's cut to the chase and answer a question. Should we be doing data structures and algorithms? The straight out answer is no. This is not a software core software engineering uh, interview. Uh, the skill set required for the, these kinds of positions is different. Companies are aware about it and they test accordingly. Now let's delve into what all coding questions do you actually need to prepare for. First and foremost, bit manipulation. I can't stress this enough. You should know bit manipulation. Most of the phone screen interviews will ask bit manipulation questions. You should know the power of logical operators uh, and or XOR, NOR. Now coming forward to Puneet's tip. Go to Geeks for Geeks. Search for uh, uh, bit manipulation tricks. There will be two articles for it. You should know all that. Then go to Google and search for commonly asked bit manipulation questions. Do 15 of those questions. You will have so much confidence that you will be able to tackle any sort of bit manipulation questions. That's all you need. Coming forward to the next topic, which is linked list. Another favorite topic for the interview preparation is linked list. And there's a good reason for it. This helps to test pointer concepts as well as logical thinking might start with preparing uh, creating your own linked list now do that with all possible combinations do it with a global head do it with a double pointer get the full feel of the concept right this is very important this will just make you very comfortable with pointer manipulation you know and how to deal with any sorts of pointer questions it will you will love it right and once you're done with it work on concepts of linked list reversing you know uh, and just, just to be very honest you should know linked list reversal even if you know somebody wakes you up in the middle of the sleep and is like hey how to reverse a linked list you should know how to do that all right now let's talk about string manipulation and array manipulation now you should do enough questions to make sure that you're very comfortable uh, with the with the entire concept my tip is to start with the brute force method just traverse the array an amount of times just to get to the solution once you are able to get that basic solution that you knew do you basically then know okay what the question is how to get the solution to it then work towards optimizing it now a pro tip for preparing for string uh, questions is that any sort most of the string questions uh, if you're asked for an optimization solution for it could be solved through a hash map now, don't get scared on just uh, listening to the word hash map. It's basically just an array of 256 characters where each character, um, basically each index represents an ASCII index and you can store the occurrences of each of these characters through their uh, index by their ASCII numbers. That's it. That's all you need to know. Um, the other major thing is stacks and queues implementations. Now, one thing I would uh, like to tell you is that this list in no way is like going to be a comprehensive list, uh, you know, that, okay, this is the thing that is going to be definitely as in an interview and this is the only thing you should be doing. Once this is the least that you should be doing to put forward uh, in a good way, <laughs> then once you're done with this, what you need to do is go to lead code. Now, 
uh, again, don't get scared by the term lead code because it's generally used for software engineering interview questions. Don't worry about it. Just go and search for commonly, there's a, there's a playlist for commonly asked interview questions. Um, and then there is tabs for easy, medium, hard. Go to easy section and then do the question. After you're done with all this, uh, go and practice uh, the questions for all the topics that I mentioned today um, through on the in the easy section. Then that will give you a numerous amount of confidence to you know crack that coding question, which will you will be basically getting in your interviews and do it hands-on coding. Uh, do go to online C compiler and just try to you know write the code. Pre prepare for that aspect as well because you know uh, otherwise you will freeze when you are actually doing it in the uh, interview. So create a temperament for that aspect as well. So. I hope this video was useful um, for 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 you, and you know you're not now not scared at least in terms of looking at the syllabus. You know what to prepare, what not to prepare. Um, again, this is what worked well for me. I hope this works uh, out for you as well. If there are any questions, please feel free to add a comment. I'll try to um, uh, reply to those comments. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching this video, and I'll uh, try to make more videos. Uh, to help out uh, the people in this uh, community. Thanks a lot.